My brothers and sisters in Christ, today the church celebrates the feast of Saints Philip and James, uh, two apostles who share the same feast day due to the fact that their relics both came to Rome in the fifth century to be placed in a church. So actually the church dedicated now, it's the, the, the church Sancta Apostoli, the, the church of the 12 apostles, it's been renamed to be dedicated to all the 12. But the relics of St. James and St. Philip are there, and hence the origin of them having a joint feast day. Now, in the case of St. James, I, I often talk in the gospel today focuses more on Philip. I often like to talk about St. Philip, but uh, I this year feel more compelled to talk about St. James. It's first of all important to know who we're talking about. Uh, like many names that appear multiple times in the scriptures, we can get confused which one. There's a whole bunch of Marys, for example, and there's more than one James. Who are we talking about? This is James the Lesser, as he's known. One of the 12 apostles, but not the James who's the brother of John, not the James, the son of thunder. You know, there's three apostles that often get called apart that kind of seem to rank above the other apostles with Jesus, and that's Peter, James, and John. That's the James that's known as James the Greater because he was older and first in prominence in this way. James the Lesser is therefore, there's fewer unique things recorded about him in the scriptures. However, he did just so happen to figure prominently in yesterday's first reading. when we've been talking about the council of the so-called Council of Jerusalem. St. Peter, of course, had his role at the head of, uh, you know, as the first amongst the apostles speaking there. And we see Paul and Barnabas sharing, but at the end of yesterday's account, we hear James kind of give the definitive word. Why is this? Because James the Lesser was the Bishop of Jerusalem. And so this gathering, in the case of all the apostles, in a sense, by modern terms, we would say it was in James's jurisdiction. He was the host bishop, if you will, of the most ancient see of Jerusalem. And so the tradition says that James the Lesser actually took over once Peter left. Peter left the region to go to Rome, and at this point, St. James the Lesser uh, became the, the bishop of the area. He would go on to be martyred himself in the 60s uh, by stoning for witnessing uh, against the authorities there who, as we know famously in the Acts of the Apostles, they try to execute Paul, but Paul is a Roman citizen puts in the request as he had the right to, to have his case heard in Rome. So Paul escapes the grasp and the wrath locally. And so they take it out on James the Lesser. They throw him from the, the top of the city walls down to the ground. He survives. They stone him to death, and he gives profound witness. I share all of this not only because James the Lesser often gets uh, forgotten, uh, James the, the Greater, who was the very first of the apostles to, to be martyred. So Judas Iscariot, of course, was the first of the 12 to die, not martyrdom, uh, taking his own life. But then of the remaining apostles, James the, the Greater, James the, the son of thunder, brother of John, is the first to die, as recorded in the Acts of the Apostles by King Herod. But then James the Lesser ultimately witnesses as the Bishop of Jerusalem uh, makes his own martyrdom. Again, I share all of this because the readings these last couple days have hopefully reminded us of the great gift of the apostolic succession. As I've shared, as I shared in the, yesterday's video, that Christ left his church. He didn't leave a guidebook of A to Z of the answer to every question. He didn't leave a fully developed catechism. But what he left was a promise that the gates of hell would not prevail against his church. He left an advocate in the Holy Spirit to bring them to all truth and understanding, and he gave the power of the keys, the power of binding and loosing. So this authority to continue the ministry of the church in his name, guided by the Holy Spirit, that as long as they kept this communion with one another and this authority instituted by Christ, the church would be firm on apostolic foundations. We've seen this embodied in the readings this week, and so now, today, we celebrate the feast of Saints Philip and James with great joy, and that they who 
would go on and minister in the name of Christ, would each face their own martyrdom, and then whose relics would eventually also make their way to Rome together, where they stand to this day uh, in the church in Rome together. We thank the Lord for the apostolic foundations on which his church stands secure. Saints Philip and James, pray for us. Mm -hmm.